Hey guys, it's Mike again. I've got another video in this series of little tidbits about working in video production. And today I wanna to talk about why room tone, which is actually just silence, is one of the most important things that you could possibly record on a commercial or film shoot. So if you're a sound guy out there, uh, I guess rejoice a little bit. So this will be somebody explaining why that 30 seconds that you ask for, or that 15 seconds you ask for of room tone is actually super vital. Show this to anybody who gives you any grief when you're asking for that room tone so they can understand why it's so important. Room tone is a clip of just complete silence that you get in any room or situation or setting. And it's usually done at the end of a scene or before you move from one area to another. It's basically a fingerprint of how the silence in the room while you were recording actually sounds. Because not all silence is quiet and you can tell by listening to just the room that I'm in right now. There's a little bit of an echo because it's not a soundproof room, but you can hear, let's take a listen to what this room sounds like. As you can hear, not completely silent. There has been a lot of times where even on my own shoots, I feel like, man, I really wish we had made a second just to make some room tone work. And I'll show you why here in a minute. I actually started as a musician before I was a filmmaker. I was a musician at a very young age. But because I started in sound, my understanding of film actually works with sound first and then picture. Even when I edit, a lot of times when I'm editing a talking head or any kind of scene, I won't really pay attention to how the picture works until I get the sound right. Even in a narrative film, the way and the timing and the tempo of a, of a line being delivered can change the way a scene works. It could change the way that it feels entirely. So sometimes I'll start with editing the sound first and then worry about the picture second. Um, film is a visual medium, but without sound, it's only half of the story. So all the time that people put into um, lenses and cameras and, and uh, LUTs and looks and color correction, that's all equally important as the sound being clean and properly recorded. To illustrate what room tone is and why it's so important, I wanted to hop over here and show you guys a little bit of uh, how it works when you have proper room tone and how it works when you don't have proper room tone and why it's a bit of a headache. Um, again, sound guys, hopefully you're all watching this video and cheering it on because I know that getting room tone is something that people ask for and a lot of times don't receive because we just don't have time and we have to move on. So from one director to all the sound guys out there, my apologies for not building in time to get room tone. But let's take a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. To illustrate the importance of room tone, I wanted to pull this scene from um, a film that I'm working on right now. I'm gonna play it through here in its entirety, this just opening scene. A couple things to keep in mind, the music is temporary. There's been no sound design, which is a whole other element. And the mix is a little rough, but it's because I, I know someone will be doing the final mix on everything. So I'm not super concerned with getting everything perfect. I just wanna keep the levels somewhat reasonable. Let's go ahead and watch this clip and more importantly, take a listen. This clip here has none of the room tone that I'm about to tell you about put in place. So here we go, let's take a look. Jesus, mind your voice. Who's out here to hear me? I told you last night. I don't give a shit. I'm not waiting out here anymore. I'm the one who brought you here. He and the farm hand leave for town tomorrow. Mary, I am not staying out here one more night. You're staying? That's the plan. I'm just not certain about this plan of yours anymore. Uh, 
obviously the color correction is hasn't been addressed at all. That's all just raw footage right out of the camera. I think actually you're probably seeing just the proxies. But most importantly, we're talking about sound. There was a couple of instances in there where you may have heard a little bit of silence, absolute zero decibel silence, which in a finished piece, you would never ever hear that. You would always hear some sort of air. You would always hear some sort of atmosphere. You will notice that as people are moving around, you don't hear like the leaves crunching and, and stuff like that. Um, we're gonna try to figure out whether we wanna do that with Foley or if we're gonna do some sound design later on. But we do have some audio clips you can hear here. We have like some of that stuff that we're gonna put in over top. What I'm specifically wanting to talk about here today is dialogue. Room tone is meant for dialogue and to cover action and to cover your cuts when you don't necessarily have what you need to be able to uh, cover an instance where dialogue drops out and maybe you just need the cut to hang for a second. If you put a clip in there with no audio whatsoever, your decibels, which you'll see here, will drop down to zero. You don't necessarily want that to happen because then the viewer will be taken out of the experience entirely. Um, you want them to be completely immersed. So let's take a couple of looks at these spots here. Um, you can see what's going on here is I've got one camera track. That's all my camera here. We shot on uh, an Alexa Mini with some Cook anamorphic lenses. That's this image that you're seeing here. Um, you'll also see I've got one, two, three, four, uh, four, four audio tracks on each clip and then one music, that's the music track. And then you'll see these clips here that are highlighted and then some that are deselected. The darker ones are just enabled or they're, I guess, disabled so we don't hear them. Basically, I go through here and select which portion of the audio track I wanna use. For instance, on this clip, I'm using his lav. I always try to default toward the boom. The boom gets a wider uh, EQ range. It's a little, it's just a little cleaner sounding. And then these gaps here, these are the ones I wanna talk about specifically. This is where we have characters on screen, but no audio. And the reason that is, is because I may be using cuts in a way that they weren't necessarily originally intended to be used. You can see here, she delivers this line. You're staying, that's the plan. And then I wanted to cut to this wide to let the tension of the moment breathe for a little bit, but I didn't necessarily have the right audio from that. And so I basically am using this clip, but now I have to put something in here. And this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. On this film, we had two different audio recorders. Unfortunately, in this particular instance, we did not get room tone. So I don't have a clip of room tone, which would be something that would look pretty similar to how this clip here looks, where you have lots and lots of just the f noise floor going on and then the actor's dialogue which you can hear here she's not certain about this plan of yours anymore and because i don't have room tone i have to find an area where i have a lot of this noise so i'm actually going to use that exact clip from right here let me get that cut a little bit better and now i've got this little chunk here which will probably be what I use for everything. Um, this little chunk here has, and if we just listen to it, it's just the sound of the atmosphere that where we're at. Um, it's the sound of the air and any just ambient noise reverberating off the trees in this specific location. Um, what we should have done was roll a clip of this right here with the actor standing in place where they originally were. And then we would have hung a boom probably behind this tree and just rolled 30 seconds of nothing, 30 seconds of silence. Um, that way in this little gap, I could have just taken that clip of room tone that I could have had pulled aside here and filled in that gap. Luckily, I'm able to save it from this clip here, um, which we're gonna do by just taking this and then inserting it into that gap I'm going to leave it here on this track. Let's take a listen. We may have to do some mixing, but um, I'm going to do a side by side. We're going to turn it off and listen to it once, and then I'll turn it on so we can hear it. Here is uh, with no room tone. Hang out here one more night. You're staying. That's the plan. And you can hear how that that silence just drops to zero decibels. It we go from staying, having. That's the plan. 
this to zero, nothing. And then as soon as that clip kicks back in, we get, you know, somewhere around negative 42. It's not certain about this when he's planning, talking Up to about negative nine. So let's turn the, the room tone on and take another listen. I'm not staying out here one more night. You're staying, that's the plan. It's subtle. It's a very, very subtle thing. But without that in there, the clip just completely drops to no noise and it will take the audience out. And it's kind of a mark of, you know, a little less polished production. Uh, I think having those areas filled in with this type of room tone will really make the, the entire dialogue scene play a little cleaner. I'm gonna fill in, you see we have a couple more gaps. I'm gonna fill in those gaps with a little bit more of the same room tone because the actors haven't moved. We haven't gone to a new location. We haven't um, added any, any other actors or any other voices around. Um, I'm just duplicating that clip by clicking option or holding option and then clicking the clip and then dragging it somewhere else. That just makes a copy. So now I've got this little section here, which I've lined up and trimmed to the right area. And this little section here, which I've lined up and done the same thing. So now you can see as soon as the dialogue starts right here until the dialogue ends, which is right here, we have continuous audio. This applies not only to narrative stuff, but also um, any commercial stuff. I, a lot of the time we shoot, a lot of the time as freelance filmmakers, we'll shoot those talking head, you know, commercial things where someone's just talking about a product or a service or their company to the camera. And you are that's technically cutting dialogue, it's monologue, but it's, it's voice, you're cutting voice. Anytime you have a gap in the audio, that's a very good example of where you could use room tone to just level that out. So obviously having this is not a luxury, it should be a requirement. You should get them on every shoot because if I didn't have this clip right here that had a lot of audio in there, you basically just have to make it up. You have to find and chop it out of something and you could be searching in audio clips for hours to find something to fill that in with. So it's not necessarily a luxury. It should be a requirement for every setup. This is one setup. We should have gotten room tone here. This is the entire film and you can see each one of these is a different scene. In every single one of these scenes, we should have gotten room tone. Just at the end of a setup, just roll a clip for 15 seconds. If it's directly into the camera, like my audio is here, roll a video clip for 15 seconds. If you have audio on a separate recorder, make sure you roll on the camera as well. Um, what I would do is just point the camera towards the microphone and make sure someone says room tone and then the duration. So everyone hold for room tone for 15 seconds, everyone hold for room tone for 30 seconds. It is important that any crew that was in place during the filming of these scenes stay exactly where they were. Any actors stay about in the same place. You don't wanna move because when people move, the ambient noise can change color or change shape. So you just roll that clip, everyone holds still for, for 30 seconds. You don't have to hold your breath or anything, but you just try to keep movement and noise to a minimum. That's room tone, guys. Hopefully you understand the importance of filling those gaps. Recording silence on a film set or a commercial shoot is super vital. Silence is not the same in every location. Silence can change just based on how close actors are to one another. Hearing the way that the air moves, hearing the room, hearing the reverberations around the actors and the props and the setup and the scene is super important. And if you don't have it, you can find creative ways to work around it, but it's just so much easier to take 15 seconds at the end of a scene before you move on, grab a little bit of room tone. Again, sound guys, I hope you feel a little vindicated by watching this. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I've got a few more of these coming. Um, I've got a few more that I've already posted. I'm gonna try and focus on some of those small things that don't necessarily always get talked about. It's purposely some of the like less sexy stuff with, involved with filmmaking, but is very, very vital. There are a lot of channels that you can learn from on YouTube, and I'm very aware that a lot of those channels have much more technical knowledge and technical experience than I do, but I just wanted to pass along some of these little hard lessons that I've learned along the way, things that as a self-taught filmmaker, sometimes you miss, and sometimes they're very vital things. Room Tone is one of those examples. So if you liked this and you wanna follow along, click the subscribe button. If you have any questions that you'd like me to address or if you have anything you'd like me to talk about in a future video, leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.